de la GPL. And two days ago, Double Lift didn't know who he was, but he definitely does now. It's who Enough chit chat to the game. I I can't get enough of these intros, man. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I just wanna. I'm just worried where it's going. At one point. <laughs> so like they're. Where the is the line? Where like, is we're, the? Line? We're done. We're out of intros. Where do we go next? <laughs> I guess we'll maybe we'll find out. You know, still got another day and a half or so of one v ones. So. I mean, luckily towards the end, it's gonna be best off series, which requires only one intro for up to three oh, games. So maybe they can really get some value yeah. from their script writing yeah, right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, did they peak on day one? You know, that's the big question, right? Can you can you top the rat -a tat tat Yeah, if you walk into a crowd and you get seared on, sometimes you use your best material far yeah, too quickly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> peak too soon, Grumbo. Peak too soon. <laughs> peak too soon. Uh, but we are going to be having uh, another good matchup here. It's it's Levi and it's Wayless. Wayless obviously kind of put the smack down on double <laughs> lift, um, and which was really satisfying to see. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. It was honestly, I didn't really think double lift had much of a chance in the Twitch versus LeVong matchup. So I, I'll See, I think he was in a good position. I think he would have won if he just kept. If he just went for CS, because he I talked to him. He's like, yeah, I didn't want to lose. Uh, I didn't want to win on CS. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're playing one v one tournament. Just bloody win. Yeah, because I, I don't think that you can win in the all in in no. that situation. No. It's like once LeBlanc hits the chain, it's pretty brutal. Especially if you walk into a rush. Anyways, he's out of the tournament. Doesn't matter anymore. LeBlanc, Ergot, and Tom Kench banned on the left side. Draven, Caitlyn banned by Wayless. Yeah, so LeBlanc taking off the table here for Wayless and uh, Levi, we just saw him crushing on Lee Sin. That's going to be available. Maybe he oh. could uh, bait Wayless into a Lee Sin 1v1. Challenge him to a 1v1. That would be cool. Um, he played a mean Kha'Zix as well in IWC8. I think it was in the Assassin's mode where he had something like 17 kills. Yeah, so you know, if you're thinking of the kind of some of those jungle champions and stuff, we could even see Rengar. We saw Rengar work out, but, yep. I, but I think that was kind of one of those things where if you respect the Rengar, if you stay far enough away from the yeah. bush, it's a lot harder for him to win those those all-ins, and it's... Definitely agree. You can drop like 10 CS to him early, and it's, yeah. still, it's still a Rengar. Like, yeah. All he has is a brush. Yep. Just stay away from it. Just stay to that right side of the map, pretend that the left side doesn't exist. Yep. It's gonna be a okay. Safety and relics. All right, time's ticking down again. These guys are not considering a 1v1. There's too little talking. I don't see their... Uh, they're communicating too much right now. Oh, they are. They both are talking between Brand and, and Lee Sin here. But they're just waiting for the for the last moment to switch their picks, obviously. Yeah, let's see if they do end up blocking it. Okay. Lucian Varus. The crowd goes mild. The crowd goes mild. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is this is one where it's like seems pretty hard for Lucian to me. It's really that seems hard. like really hard for Lucian because. Yeah. Lucian has lower range, he can get poked out. It's like, sure, if Lucian gets in on the Varus and is able to have some sort of an early all-in, great. But Varus can sit back, you can poke him out with the E early, the EQ early. Like, it's gonna be very tough for Lucian, I think. In a, in a traditional meta, right, when we see bot lane 2v2s and we see a Varus lane, why don't we see it very often? Well, because it's low mobility. Yeah, you can get ganked. You can get uh, squashed by ganks or by like a melee support closing gap. Guess what, it's not here. Yep. Junglers or supports, it's 1v1. This guy has no weakness in terms of mobility. Um, Lucian Q harass through the lane is dodgeable because it's shorter range. Varus can always land that E harass over time. If Lucian starts dodging with E, he again is capped in his mana pool, so it's incredibly hard for the Lucian. I think it's a matchup, honestly, where you may even run cleanse, dodge out of the ulti at level six, and you put a calling in the face. I think that's yeah. the win condition for Lucian. Yeah, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, calling is not something that he's really going to be able. To, he nope. can't flash out of it. He can't really react to it very well. Uh, and if you do connect that full calling, but it's actually interesting, they both swapped off of Ignite, so we're going to have Barrier, Exhaust for both players, which is kind of the more defensive route, and it could be something where uh, Levy could kind of just sit back and try to just actually CS and say, hey, I'm actually just going to far better than Wayless, try to win it out like that, but it becomes tough because if you if you bring this to CS, Wayless is going to be able to get some mana, he's going to be able to get some items, and he's going to be able to start trying to poke you out. But I really like what Wayless has done with his room page. So he runs the traditional... Um, Armor on his yellows mm. versus an AD carry, but he's full mana region on his glyphs. So that yeah. is 3.0 mana region per five seconds that he's running. He spec very heavily in attack speed, so all his quints are attack speed, which means he really wants to go for a triple 
uh, stack proc and then proc away one of his abilities, then yeah. get some more and do it again and really play around that percent damage. And he really understands that the, he doesn't need to kind of itemize or spec against the weaknesses generally where you run maybe like CDR uh, glyphs or you run mana re or magic resistance glyphs. Like he's really built for this 1v1. Yep. And I also think that having that 19% attack speed allows him to push that much easier. If he yep. wants to push his opponent and harass him under turret, this is going to help him to do that. So both players have elected to start Q first. And we are going to see that and just going to start kind of farming it out here. But I think the mana regen, once again, it's very intelligent. He doesn't want to get up in the face of the Lucian. He wants to sit back. He wants to be able to poke him out. And the only, only kind of risk there is if you get pushed in, you have to start CSing under turret. And, and just like that, you can fall behind. So yep. Wayless needs to make sure he's using his attack speed, keeping the wave at least more even, so he can be able to pick up more of this farm and kind of keep it more neutral. Yeah, always be auto attacking the minions. And when you harass with your spells, you want uh, kind of double value. So you want to hit both the Lucian and the Creeps. But that's why they start E as well, because yeah. if you use Q through an entire wave, one, it's hard to hit, and two, it's going to do much uh, more diminished damage. And you can see Wayless is actually kind of scared of the Lucian dashing in. So he's, he's sitting very far back. He's using his auto attack so much less. You can even just see, like, he was strafing back and forth with the three main range minions there. Well, Levy was pushing up, hitting his Q, using his passive on the minions, and, and he has been kind of in control of this wave. Yeah, but uh, Lucian uh, spikes much earlier. Uh, much better early trade. That level two power spike, Crapo. Tell me about spike. it. Was he was he backpedaling? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wayless, is, he, is this the equivalent of backpedaling, what he was doing, <laughs> canceling some autos? Well, the E does not land there. And and so far, Levy, Levy's doing a really good job with the CS. And it, it would be interesting to see if, if he wants to go for something like, he has Warlords, I do believe. So if you pick up the Warlords, if you go something like a Vamp Scepter or whatever, yep. and you just try to kind of push your, your opponent really, really quickly, and just kind of try to heal up and, and outlast him in that way and win on farm. He is running armor on his glyphs, so he's not running the, the mana region that way. So that's kind of the only yeah. difference in the build. Both are indeed running Warlords. But he is running Perseverance as well as uh, all of the HP regen talents. So he has the like lifesteal talents, he has the flat regen talents, he's 12 into resolve. So this means he can kind of sit through a lot of the poke. And, and I think that stacking lifesteal with a build like this makes a lot of sense because you can get that push, you can kind of tank through and hopefully just heal back up over and over. And uh, I think it's a really smart strategy, actually. He's also just playing it very well. He, yeah. Whenever there's a window for him to go aggressive, he does, he does up into it. So he's not super like tunnel vision focused on this push yeah. as a mild CS lead. But as we'll see, as this matchup progresses, Wayless, once he gets access to more spells, is going to be much more comfortable dealing immediately with these larger waves. Yeah, but, but Levy is controlling the runes. He picks up both the runes, which is very big there, uh, and he is going to be able to get an advantage from that. But that's a mistake. Wayless was playing on the left side for burst control, but at the same time, he could have easily been playing on the opposite side yeah. and gotten that relic right there. So that is Wayless leaving an opportunity for Levy, and he is definitely punishing where he sees them fit. Right now, he's playing more in a defensive posture, but he's definitely on top of his game. Yeah, certainly. It kind of talks again about the fact that these guys practice these modes. Oh, I love this. Yeah, this is going to be a slow push for his opponent, which is going to deny a lot of the minions there. So I think this is really smart. Most people would have tried to shove it in. I don't think they would have got it in in time. Yeah, I need to look at what the range creeps are doing. If you're wondering ever how a freeze becomes to be, it's basically because there is a slight advantage, especially in range creeps on the other side. Just look at them. They're all going to focus a creep. Melee creeps are really good at soaking up damage. It's the range creeps that you want to keep alive. And then when the next wave comes in, it just kind of stacks up and up and up. And if you're asking yourself, hey, well, he's missing some minions. Why did he do this? It's because the opponent has more minions that are going to kill off his minions. So even though he misses a couple CS, his opponent loses way more and must push forward into him and kind of in a more vulnerable spot. And I do like the purchase here. I think Cloth Armor is actually yeah, uh, pretty smart. smart. Especially in AD carry matchups because um, I feel like, as we see the Rally being taken, really good punish by Wayless. But look how that, little damage that is. Damage helps you part on your uh, on your abilities and part on your auto attacks, but it's kind of scaling. But armor, I feel like it works against the base damage of abilities as well. Therefore, it's kind of more uh, beneficial. It's more useful. It does kind of suck in all ins, but if you're playing CS game, armor is a good choice. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and this is kind of my understanding of what Levy wants to do. That looks like a not so good trade, but he has more regen. He has more lifesteal. He has these defensive masteries. And his plan is, hey, yes, I lose that little trade. Oh, in, he has the culling. Is he going to go for it? Oh, Barrier, no enough. exhaust. Really well timed there. He went back, got the last CS ready. As he was dying, he walks up with the dying CS. This is so smart. Six. And this is honestly super well played by Levy. This is so smart. 
the, the cloth armor, the defensive masteries, the way he is playing this. He's now going to be able to deny minions. He's up 14 CS, gets a better buy. He's basically tanking his opponent to a victory. Yeah, he's just like a, a pseudo bruiser. I think is the closest we can call it. I mean, he has one cloth armor. We're yeah. not going to call him a bruiser, but I, I definitely agree. Two with cloth armors, Crepo. Two cloth armors. Yeah, They're what do you got to say now? <laughs> He's down, practically Krippo. Mundo with six items. This is as close as we'll ever get to a Renekton again. <laughs> yeah. But it is just so super uh, efficient because like any physical damage that is already on the base damage of an ability now gets negated a bit better by the cough armor. Obviously, there's Warlords, which rewards you on lower HP. I love that he's proactively sweeping every time. He can cancel the back, but instead he's just going for that freeze again, pulling the wave. Yeah, and, and I think since the back has gone off, he, he's just trying to group the minions now, and yep. he's going to be able to pull them all together. They group up. He actually puts the range minions behind yes. the melees. That's really important. Yeah. He rearranges the wave, mm -hmm. in a sense. If you wonder, if he's pulling the minions, why did he kill one then? Because he needs to stay sustained. A little bit of yep. lifesteal here and there. Still, there's a massive advantage. If there's a four stack of range creeps at the back, and there's a cannon creep, you have control of where you want the wave to go. Now he can pull the wave to him again, and then when crawling is up again, go for the all-in with barrier on cooldown. Exactly, and he's going to be able to pick up most of these CS, because he has, he has a lot of AD. He has double Dorans, he has double Longsword. This is super free to last hit another turret, and okay, he misses one, but, but you still. As that, of course, uh, Master Curse. Still, I mean, he's up 10 CS, he's doing very well, and, and for Wayless, he needs some lifesteal. He picks up the Vamp Scepter, but then it's like, well, you're not going to have enough mana. You're not going to be able to really do a huge amount of damage to poke this guy out. So where is your advantage? Where do you win here? And it, it starts to become a bit desperate for Wayless. Especially if you see that Wayless opts in in the same style with the Vamp Scepter. Exactly. You're trying to do what your opponent is doing, but you're doing it worse. From behind, and that's how you never win. So Wayless needs to make a tactical shift and honestly go for open with an auto attack, auto attack into Q. Try to range and go for the ulti, but there's really good sights from Levy. Again, he dodges it, turns it into crawling. Wayless right now tanking creeps. Exhaust is there too. Levy can dash again real soon, and that's it. Oh, the exhaust. Oh, oh he canceled his auto. He had to back up there. He stuttered the auto because of the exhaust. The attack speed reduction. Levy would have had it. But don't fret too much. He's still up a lot of farm. He can push it in, and, and both players have the barrier, but th that should have been game. Yeah, that should have been game if he went. Slightly more ultimate, but he still has so, an entire yeah. barrier and he can definitely outplay Look this at one. his lifesteal. He, he's already back so much of this HP. He's being able to heal back up. He's being able to regen back up. And, and he can look to go aggressive on Wayless if he sees the opportunity. And the problem is Wayless needs to get a couple auto attacks in before he uses abilities. Levy. The only way he loses this right now is if he gets sucked in and kind of greets for the like the last few CS. Yeah, or, or if he can get baited into an all-in. Like At this point, you don't even have to. You can use Cullings on the wave and stuff. He's 20 CS from victory. Uh, his opponent basically has to get almost three full waves advantage in farm. And at this point, Levy has the item advantage. He has kind of the CS advantage. If you keep your opponent in lane here, if you keep him stuck in this, then how do you lose? I really like that he's trading just every time Wayless uses either an E or a Q. It's being traded for... The gap calls are on the side of Levy. Yeah, very smart. He's going to miss that CS, unfortunately. That's a bit unlucky, but should be able to... Uh, okay, well, that, that was a little bit careless. I mean, he should have at least got two of those. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's trying to decide, like, am I getting bait into an all-in? What's the cooldown on Varus Ultimate? Should I base? Guys, he's trying to run the numbers here. And Wales is taking advantage of that confusion. I think the best thing to do for Levy here is just base. Yeah, part of the problem here is that because he's, he's hesitating on what to do, now he's going to lose a lot of minions to the turret when he does base. Uh, and he is eventually going to kind of come to that conclusion where that that's what he should do. But when you give up the minion advantage, when you give up the wave, uh, then you're not auto-attacking, you're not using that lifesteal. And wow, look at this buy. He picks up a Warden's Mail as well as the Caulfield. So super efficient, super, efficient, super tanky. Uh, and because it was a cannon wave, he's actually not losing as many minions as he should have, right? The cannon tanks it up, it allows you to get back there. Because Wayless also hesitated. He would hesitate on the punish, and obviously it's really hard for him to like kind of tear through that entire wave because he's running so much attack speed and doesn't have that much uh, raw AD to enhance his abilities. He's 10 CS away. I, I don't think Wayless could have even afforded to back here. He's going to get this full free wave, then he's 4 CS away, uh, and culling is oh, up. He just, has to, coming in. he just has to cull the next wave. Wayless must all in now. Wayless has to all in pretty much immediately. And even still, Levy has his barrier, and he can just culling the wave. I mean, what is Wayless going to do? 90% over, but we have been wrong in the past. So Wayless, I don't even know why he's going for CS. Yeah. Doesn't matter at Wales this point. Wayless needs to get out there and start fighting, because the minion wave is coming. Oh, no sweep. There is almost an exhaust. He really wants to get that exhaust up, too. Wayless pops the elixir. Levy can just let the minions do the talking for him. There's 12 CS remaining. Look at yeah. Wayless. He wants to deny as much as he can. 
I, I he's think, ready though. I think the thing is, if Wayless tanks a full calling, <laughs> then Levy can just win the all-in, but he just needs those minions. He's gonna go going for in, it. He's going in, putting calling on a wave. One minion, two, a roll more. Levy's Wayless blocking the calling. It's over. got it. And we talked about it. Is it mechanics or is it intelligence? And Levy, he outbought Wayless. This was so smart. The crowd, a little bit unhappy, it's not a kill, but I, I gotta give this guy credit. He Screw the crowd. If you get to a CS victory by building efficiently, they can boo all day one. This was very well played by Levy, especially if you look at the early game. This guy was reacting well in every single scenario. He was dashing yep. out of abilities, trading mana, 